Yeah, Lord, thank you so much for time with kids on Wednesday. I thank you for this lesson that you've given to us, and I pray that you would use it, that you would teach us through it, and that um, we would learn from it, and um, just learn about the power of the Holy Spirit and how we um, can tap into that for our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so I'm in my kitchen today, and... When we ask Jesus to be our savior, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of us. Um, the Holy Spirit is God, just like Jesus is God. Um, and it can be kind of confusing even for adults to understand all about the Holy Spirit. So I've got a couple of verses that I want to read to you. First one is Ephesians 1.13. And these verses are going to tell us a little bit about the Holy Spirit and what he does and uh, why we need him, okay? Uh, let's see. Ephesians 1.13 says, In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. So that tells us that when we accept Jesus as our Savior, the Holy Spirit comes and lives in us. Okay? Um, the next verse is 1 Corinthians 3.16. Here's what it says. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? So that's another one where it tells us the Holy Spirit dwells in believers once we've become, um, once we've put our trust in Jesus. Um, and our last one is Galatians 4, 6. And Galatians 4, 6 says, because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Um, a lot of times uh, when we ask Jesus to be our Savior, you might hear people say, I asked Jesus into my heart. And that's um, a verse like that is where that terminology comes from when we talk about having Jesus in our heart. Um, so let's look. I'm going to move this for a minute. We'll get back to that. Okay. So um, the Bible also tells us, let me read one more verse. I know I said that was the last. But the Bible also tells us that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, was there at creation. And so if we go all the way back to the book of Genesis, and all the way back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, so there was nothing. Okay, um, Darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And so that, uh, in the very beginning of Genesis, in the very beginning of our Bible, it tells us that the Spirit was there in the very, very beginning. Um, so I want to show you something here. Okay, so what are some things that we know about the Holy Spirit? Y'all can pipe in and we'll fill in our chart here. What are some things that we know about the Holy Spirit? Oops. Anybody? Okay, if, if you're not sure that you know anything about the Holy Spirit, it, are there any questions that you have or things that you would like to learn about the Holy Spirit? All right, we are a blank canvas. <laughs> so let's see. Um, let's talk about what is sin. We've talked about sin a lot, especially on Sundays. Um, what is sin? Anything we think, say, or do that goes against God's plan or displeases God, right? And we've talked about how all people are sinners, right? Because we've all done something that goes against God's plan or displeases God. Um, so let's look at the Holy Spirit. Let me get rid of this over here. Holy Spirit is God. The Bible tells us that God will. Okay. So the Holy Spirit is God. And these are some of the things that the Bible tells us about the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit gives us power, that he guides us to know truth, 
Uh, he gives us the ability to speak boldly about God. He dwells in believers. We talked about that. He helps us when we are weak. He gives us freedom. He convicts us of our sin. That means he helps us to know when we're sinning and when we need to straighten up. And he does so much more. So let's look at this. What, what shape do I have right here? A triangle. It's a cross and a hand. But the yellow, what is the yellow shape? A triangle. A triangle. If I take one of the pieces away, do I still, hold on. Do I still have a triangle? No, that's not a triangle because it doesn't have all the parts, right? So just like this triangle is only a triangle because it has three parts, God has three parts. It's God the Father, God the Son, who is Jesus, who came and lived on earth as a human, and God the Holy Spirit. And we put a hand there because the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is our helper, um, so a helping hand. So uh, it takes all three to make God, just like it takes all three sides to make a triangle, okay? So that's kind of a neat illustration for the Holy Spirit. Um, Okay, so now I've got my pretty cool demonstration for you. Okay. So when the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us, when we become a Christian, we ask Jesus to come into our heart, to forgive our sins, and to be our Savior. Okay, this is us before we're a Christian. Nothing there. Okay. We're going to use this water to represent the Holy Spirit, and he's going to come into our lives, and he's going to fill us up. The Bible told us that the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, right? And he's perfect and he has no sin because he's God, right? But when we become a Christian, do we immediately stop sinning? No, we try not to sin, but we're still going to keep sinning, right? And so I've got some stuff. I've got some yucky stuff. So we might still be a little bit sassy to our parents. Ooh. We might be a little bit sassy to our parents. We might still have some bitterness against someone, right? Uh-oh, we're not so clean, clean anymore, right? We might tell lies. This looks like water, but it's not. It's a vinegar. Right? It stinks. Vinegar is, well, okay. So we might still tell lies. Is that a sin? That's a sin, right? We might have some anger. Here's hot sauce. We might be angry, lose our temper, right? Those are sins. Sometimes we might have envy or jealousy. Usually green represents envy or jealousy. We're not looking so clean anymore, are we? And then there's the bad ones. These might be um, just daily routines that take our focus off of Jesus. Uh, maybe we steal or um maybe we look at things or read things or watch movies that we shouldn't be looking at i'm not looking so good can we be very effective for god if our hearts look like this are people going to look at that and say oh wow there's a christian let me be that i'm sorry i wonder what it tastes like i'm not tasting it it <laughs> smells disgusting <laughs> So how do we fix this? We know that the Holy Spirit's living inside of us, right? Because once he comes in, he doesn't leave. But when we pray and we ask him to help us every day, he starts to fill us back up. So we say, Holy Spirit, I need your power. I need you to help me not tell lies. I need you to help me not have envy. I need you to help me... Um, know what your word says and to have truth in my heart. Maybe one day he might ask you to do something really big that you could never do on your own. Maybe he will ask you to share your faith with a friend. And you say, oh, I can't do that. And the Holy Spirit says, yeah, I can help you. And I'm going to overflow. <coughs> that vinegar is getting to me. And <coughs> <coughs> sorry. Woo. And we might continue to sin, but when we continually ask the Holy Spirit for his help, he'll fill, fill us up. <laughs> Woo! Lemon juice and vinegar are strong. Um, and when we ask him to help us every day, 
and we pray and we read our Bible and we learn our scripture, those are all ways that, um, that feeds the Holy Spirit in our life. And he'll continue pouring in and pouring in. So then not only are we clean on the inside, but what comes out of us is pure and clean. And that's when God can really, really use us. And look, it's just water. He's, he's cleaned it all out. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. It's just water. Because the Holy Spirit did its thing. So I've got a few more verses. What does the water look like in the bucket now? Well, it's just it's just gonna light brown it because I added so much water. <laughs> All right, I want to read a few more verses to you um, because when we ask the Holy Spirit to to fill us, He will, and He'll teach us, He'll guide us, He'll help us to be bold, and He'll help us to share His um, His word with others. So um, I want you to hear John. 16, 13, just a few verses, then we'll be done. All right, John 16, verse 13, and it says, this is Jesus, and Jesus was speaking when he said, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, and for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. And so the Holy Spirit um, speaks to us, and we're able to understand what God has for us because of the Holy Spirit living inside of us. Um, the next one is Acts 4.31. And it says, When they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. So the Holy Spirit gives us the boldness that we need to tell others about Jesus and about his kingdom and about how they need Jesus if they want to spend eternity with him. And finally, Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. So sometimes when we're struggling and we don't even know what to ask God for, we can just ask the Holy Spirit to, um, to pray to God for us and he'll intercede for us. Um, so I want you to know that the same spirit, the same power that was with God in the very beginning before creation, the same spirit that was there when the earth was spoken into existence, um, that's the same spirit that lives inside of you when you accept Jesus as your savior. And um, that's, that's powerful. It's more powerful than anything else that we could ever have. So, any questions? Anybody want to add anything? Was that a pretty cool demonstration? Yeah? <laughs> Did you learn anything? <laughs> and fill us up no matter what. No matter what. There's no sin too great, no sin too terrible that God cannot forgive. And, um, when we ask Jesus to be our savior, that power, that Holy Spirit is what lives inside of each and every one of us. No matter how big or how small you are, he fills up your, your heart on the inside. So this week as you, um, maybe every day when you wake up, just ask the Holy Spirit to fill you and to um, be at work inside of you each day and help him to show you how he wants you to act, who he wants you to um, share his good news with, and um, if, you'll, if you'll start to listen to the Holy Spirit and his plans for you, he can use you in some very, very big and interesting ways. My mom needs that at her work because she works at a doctor's office. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pray for y'all, and then we'll be done. Mm. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for this great gift that you have given to us, um, that you gave to us when you left this earth. Um, thank you for the promise of eternity with you. And I just pray that each and every day we would be filled with the Holy Spirit, that we would let it um, fill our hearts so that our hearts aren't full of other sinful things like greed and envy and anger and um, bitterness, Lord, but that our hearts and our lives would overflow with the love that you give and the power that you give so that when others look at us, they know that there's something different about us 
and that they will want to know what we have and how they can have it. Um, thank you for salvation. Thank you for Jesus. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. I hope I get to see y'all Sunday. <laughs> Be good. Okay. Bye.